Indie Story, From Beloved Pet to Wild Survivor and Back, a tale about the resilience and sociality of dogs. People's Anti-Cruelty Association received notice from a colleague that a mama dog and her pups were living under a trailer a few houses up from her. Three volunteers went to assess the situation to see if we could help. When we got there, we saw the mama dog and her two pups hanging out on a property littered with discarded household items. To our items advantage, and there were two bushes. large outdoor kennels on the property. It was obvious the mama was using one of them as a bed and perhaps where she had her pups. We also noticed many dog bowls near a ladder that led to the neighbor's yard. The story was that mama may have belonged to an elderly man who lived in the trailer before he died two years ago. I had to marvel at the resourcefulness of this dog while she raised two litters of pups on her own. The property was strewn with all the dog toys and tennis balls, indicating someone may have cared about mama a while ago. We found two of her puppies under the shed. Luckily for us, one of the puppies got stuck under the floor joist of the shed, so we blocked him off on each side, and with gloves on, I pulled him out from under the shed, under great protest. We decided to use the dog kennel as a trap. I had come armed with rotisserie chicken, an enticing treat for any dog. So we've got the trap set up with this rope going to the car so we can be in the car and pull the door shut. And we have food and water in here and some rotisserie chicken. So we're gonna let her eat out of here, her and the puppy eat out of here for a couple days and then come back and hopefully actually catch them. We were exhausted but hopeful. We left and went to our colleague's house where we tended to the puppy that we had caught. Two days later on July 7th, we went back intending to trap mama dog and the remaining puppy. We hoped they had visited the food and water we left out and were comfortable going in and out of the kennel. We baited the kennel with more rotisserie chicken. One volunteer hid behind the neighbor's wall while the other two volunteers stayed in the car within sight of the kennel. Mama was a bit cautious and investigated anything we had touched, including the rope that was now going from the kennel door to behind the wall. but eventually she decided she wanted the chicken and jumped into the kennel. We waited before she was all the way towards the back eating the chicken before we signaled to the other volunteer to pull the rope. The door slammed shut and Mama was inside the kennel. Now we needed to get her into a crate to transport her to my house. Mama seemed like a very nice dog and stayed at the front of the kennel near me, but she did not want a leash put on her, smartly moving just out of my reach. I didn't want to open the kennel door too much as this would allow her escape.
Mama did not want to go into the crate. She protested and flailed around, but we couldn't give up. Now we needed to trap the last puppy. The last pup was under the shed and unreachable, so we decided to use Mama as bait and put her in the dog kennel in the crate. The pup soon began looking for her mom and entered the kennel. We closed the door again by pulling the rope and successfully we had caught all the remaining dogs. We had a foster home lined up for the second puppy. We took mama to my house and she was given flea and tick prevention. I attempted to walk her around the yard and she vacillated between running from me and protesting by flailing around on the leash. After a short circle around my yard, we put her in a crate to rest and decompress. We decided to name Mama Indy after Independence Day, the weekend her life changed for the better. The second day at my house, Indy was a much improved leash walker. Standing here and letting her figure out how to come out. Good girl. We were able to walk around my entire yard. She stuck right next to me and was very observant of my actions. This huge improvement from the day before. Just a little tiny tension and she follows me. If I stopped walking, Indy would stop walking. She quickly memorized the pattern we walked around and knew where her resting places were in the shade of the trees. And now we're gonna put her back in the uh, in her kennel so she can get a drink of water and rest. The next day, I took her for a walk outside my fence. She stayed right next to me as if I had trained her to walk politely on a leash. This was such an abrupt change from two days ago where she was a whirling dervish, I started to wonder if she had been on a leash before. Many times feral dogs have reverted from being pets to feral behavior when they are abandoned or have to fend for themselves. Combined with the neighbor's information about Indy, the dog toys in the trailer yard, and her quick progress, I began to think she was a beloved pet at one time. Very soon, Indy felt comfortable enough to eat and drink with me nearby. Soon, I thought she was able to get a bath, which she badly needed, as she may not have had one in years. Indy, come. Indy, come. Yeah, good girl. Good job. Good job, girl. This dog was <laughs> definitely so much pet at one point. Gets way too fast in the process or in the time I've had her for her to be at the stage. Indy, come. Yes, good girl. I'd like to credit it to my magic training, but I don't think that's the case. Within a week or two, Indy was acting very much like a normal pet dog with me. Happy to get affection and happy to be with me and follow my lead. And she would easily follow me if I went up on rocks or over obstacles. I didn't need to tell her. She was just naturally so in tune and willing to do anything I asked her to. In another few days, I started taking Indy out in public 
We went to a playground to climb on the playground equipment. We went to a coffee shop and she was my constant companion following me around the yard. We started taking her more places that were a little busier like Cabela's and home improvement stores. She learned how to ride in the car and seemed to enjoy it. Indy walked into the pet store like she had been there a hundred times. Although it's probably unlikely she has been to them. This is just a testament to who Indy is at her core and how fantastic of a dog she is. She really enjoyed checking out all the things at the yeah. pet store. I also learned that Indy loved to play fetch. She would do little hops while chasing the ball and then bring it back and happily let girl. it go for another throw. You're a good girl. Good job. Oh my goodness. What a good girl. Huh? Indy's quick willingness and comfort with being touched and being around people indicated to me she had really been a pet before she lived under the trailer. Most feral dogs that were born feral would not make this kind of quick progress. Although they can get to this point eventually, it would take about six months versus three weeks. Indy started to really enjoy being petted and also loved getting belly rubs, as you can see here. Indy went with me when I had to go to a dog training conference in Fort Worth. This was her first road trip, and she did excellent. And she got to see more water and more grass than she will ever see in New Mexico. Here's Indy hanging out with me in the morning and displaying her ability to be the incredible melting dog. Frisbee. Indy figured out how to pick up a frisbee and loves to play fetch with her frisbee and a ball. Yeah, good girl. There you go. Good job, Indy. I didn't teach her how to play fetch. She already knew how. It just took a little bit to refresh those memories and those skills in her brain. And now she's a pro. Indy's reached a level of rehabilitation where she acts like a normal, friendly, outgoing, happy pet dog. And so she went to a different foster home. It was really hard for me to see this adorable dog leave my house, but she's doing great in her new foster home. And this is what her foster family says about her. Indy has settled in and is more playful, loving, and a little mischievous at times. She loves to be petted and will sit and look at you with her big brown eyes, imploring you to give her some attention. However, if you ignore her for just a minute, she'll go lay down quietly. She's a great hiking companion and walking partner. So far, she seems like the perfect dog. When we trap dogs, we never know what exactly we're gonna get and how they're gonna turn out. But Indy is a complete inspiration for all of us. Indy, the resilient survivor turned loving companion, is now looking for her forever home. She obviously started life as someone's pet 
and then became a dog living by herself under an abandoned trailer with her pups. Now this smart and loyal girl is ready to embrace her new life with her forever family. Indy is very curious about what her humans are up to and eager to help out in any way she can. At this point, Indy will probably only take a few days of adjustment to any new home, just like any other dog would, and then quickly settle in as being a great pet and companion for any family except households with cats or free roaming poultry. To learn how to adopt Indy in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, please visit nmpaca.org and click on Adopt a Dog.